so uh, last uh, panel, Andrew, Andrew Joel, uh, Rob Schneck, Jay Lair, and Richard Reese, Rice? Reese, okay, great. Easy. Okay. Yep, I'll you give a. Uh, here you go. I'll take mine and we go from there. Thanks. All right. All right, so I've got four cards and four people, so we're in good shape. All right. I right, can start there on the left and. My name is Chairman. My name is Jay Lair. Science Director of the Heartland Mike. Institute. I flew in from Columbus, Ohio today. Our home office. Nope, wait, wait, make, sure you, make sure your thing's on. There you go. Uh, right, our home office is in uh, Arlington Heights, uh, Illinois. We're a free market uh, think tank, and I've been science director there for 25 years. But I grew up on the streets of New York, uh, attended Princeton University, moved west, uh, got my PhD in water resources and environmental science from the University of Arizona. Uh, I have been studying uh, climate change since the mid-70s uh, when uh, global cooling was the uh, concern. Pretty much every major news magazine had pictures of the forthcoming glacier. We switched to uh, uh, global warming uh, about uh, 15 years uh, later when Al Gore uh, came along. But I've been studying sea level for uh, really since the mid-70s. Uh, and. Uh, I'm considered uh, expert in that uh, area. And I want to tell you that uh, during the Obama administration, Mr. Obama asked the uh, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric uh, Agency to uh, really double their efforts in uh, studying sea level uh, as a result of the concern uh, that climate change would have an effect on it. And uh, they uh, instituted an update on uh, 200 uh, sea level uh, tidal gauges around the United States, uh, on the East Coast, the West Coast, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, six island uh, sets out in the Atlantic, seven in the Pacific. And uh, then they did a 10 study, 10 city study on the most stable land masses in the, in the world. Uh, and those included uh, Denmark and Spain, uh, Australia, and uh, also looking at Honolulu, and uh, they look very stable records in uh, uh, Alaska along the uh, California coast and the Atlantic coast. But the poster child for uh, sea level understanding is the battery right here in New York. We have a 160-year uh, record there, and it has been rising steadily at 11 inches per century, and the projection of all of those records taken monthly for 160 years is that the sea level will continue to rise at 11 inches per century for the next century. Kings Point has about almost a 100-year record, and it's the same rate of, uh, of rise. Uh, as you look around the world in uh, Australia, uh, sea level is a very local measurement. Uh, and, and while maybe we're a few inches higher per century here in the uh, metropolitan area, uh, elsewhere in the world, it's con considerably lower. Uh, Honolulu is about six inches a century. Uh, Denmark, uh, uh, Spain, and Bombay, India are under four inches uh, a century. Uh, the highest uh, sea level rise rates uh, happen to be in Atlantic City and the Gulf Coast, which are uh, around 15 inches per century. But the numbers, and, and I want to applaud the, the council and everything they're doing uh, to increase the resiliency against the next superstorm, uh, Sandy. In fact, pretty much everything I've heard here about things that are being done uh, to protect the citizens and the environment uh, uh, are, are really splendid. The one thing that's wrong is to take, <clears throat> excuse me, to take into account the idea that sea level may rise here <clears throat> excuse me, a few feet, uh, uh, three feet or seven feet. These numbers simply uh, are unsupportable uh, scientifically. So I, I think that basically you're on track to do all the right things considering you don't want to have the destruction of another uh, Superstorm Sandy. 
but I think you shouldn't be uh, considering the catastrophic projections of sea level rise. They're not there. You can't support them. They're not going to happen. But by and large, uh, what the Corps is doing, I think, is outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, we'll come back. <laughs> Thank you for your testimony. And, and, and so, Mr. Lair, I, I want to kind of come back to you, my friend. All right. So, um, come a long way from New York City. Uh, yes, I flew in this morning and hope to be back this evening. I, I'm, I'm glad. I, I grew so, up What, right what here. inspired I, this trip? I love you, uh, coming here to uh, make a statement because uh, it's interesting that everybody here is so worried uh, about increasing sea level rise when the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric uh, Agency has the best record on the planet right here at Battery Park, 160 years, which shows no increase in the rate of sea level rise, while the increase in carbon dioxide has been uh, 30 percent over the last 40 years. Uh, the rate of sea level rise in the metropolitan area has not changed at all, and they are predicting it will not change. It's been about 11 inches a century uh, at the Battery, 11 inches a century at Kings Point, and NOAA predicts the same thing. And the gentleman who just mentioned uh, the ice coming off, uh, NOAA has records at Sitka, Alaska, of uh, sea level change and there where supposedly glaciers are melting and icebergs are melting the prediction at Sitka Alaska is a decline in sea level rise of nine inches over the next century so there is this catastrophic fear so, that so, is so you're, so you're telling me that the New York City panel on climate change has completely got this wrong that everyone in this room uh, has somehow gotten this wrong today that I am the, definitely are, let, me, let me finish okay my turn to talk um, so the middle range at they show um, are about the lower estimate is 15 inches. The high estimate is 75 inches. So you're telling us we're nowhere near any of that. We're uh, all here I am, today talking at ourselves I am, for no reason. Costa, I am saying exactly that. You are no longer, you're nowhere near that, and you're ignoring our own government agency. No is an outstanding agency. You're, you're ignoring uh, a, a very liberal president that thought climate change was a problem who directed NOAA to really double their efforts in collecting data, and the data they collected does not at all support your uh, view of climate change. But we're not talking about My carbon view dioxide. Of climate change. So let's talk about that. So I okay. see that you have put up publications recently why the UN climate report cannot be trusted. Absolutely. How Al Gore built the global warming fraud. That's correct. So I am the author thought, of those documents. You are the author of those I documents. Am. So you do not believe that climate change is man-made, and you do not believe we're contributing at I, all. Absolutely not. Okay, that's, uh, it's, uh, good. And, it's good. And I flew all and, and, the way and here. And we're all somehow wrong, and somehow you're the one well, who got it right. I, I, you're <laughs> wrong only because you're not looking at real science. And I flew here just to be one voice of of scientific reason rather than emotion. Okay, so I'm, 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 uh, no, no, from the crowd, please. You know, we got We want to keep some <laughs> level of decorum. Um, so, uh, where does the Heartland Institute get its funding from? Uh, individuals. We are a very small organization. We get no money from oil companies or no large money from Exxon Mobil at all. Not in the last fifty. I've been there twenty-five years. I would and say nothing, not in the last. So 20. the Guardian article that exposed Exxon Mobil uh, uh, as a big funder and the Mercer family uh, uh, was all, completely wrong. Uh, the nothing from Exxon Mobil for sure. I don't know anything about funding from the Mercer family, and nothing I don't think the they're in the oil business. Although well, no, they're not in the oil business, but they are a large climate denier. We we have a budget of six and a half million dollars a year. The, about eighty percent of it comes from individual small donations. Individual small donations. Individual uh, small. We are not a I, mouthpiece I, for any corporation. Really? What's yeah? Really? Can we you turned say that down with a straight face. We turned oh, easily. We turned down money from the Coke. Uh, foundation because they wanted to run our organization. We don't do that. But Basically, we are a free market organization that wants to see uh, to keep government out of our pocketbooks and look at things objectively rather than emotionally. Keep government out of your pocketbooks. How? Uh, individual freedom. Individual freedom. Individual freedom. Yes, I think. But yeah. wouldn't it, we're it, a libertarian organization? Ah, okay. So, so if 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 things do, if somehow our view is right and your view is wrong, and, and so, but then there isn't an economy, but you're okay with that. No, I'm not okay with that. There's no chance of you being right and me being wrong. Really? Really. 
Not on climate change. No chance at all. And I hope we all live long enough to see it. In fact, I, I, in, as do I. I, I okay. I'm, I've got a nine year old son who in twenty who years very impacted. In twenty years, New York City will be making some. Uh, resilient adjustments to the fact that probably we'll be entering a period of global cooling as a result of the fact that the the sunspots are at a, at a very low point, and we could probably look for it in 20 years to uh, maybe a degree and a half Fahrenheit cooler, and we'll manage. We're we're resilient. You've proved your resilience in this room. I'm I'm absolutely astounded at all the terrific things you're doing for the citizens of New York with regard to protecting against storm surges and the like. It just isn't about so all sea these, level. All these hundred-year storms that keep blowing through in different parts of the world are, are of no consequence. They're just... They're not man-made, that's for they're sure. They're not man-made. No. Nothing. No. It's arrogant to think they are man-made because nature is so overwhelming compared to what the impact that we have. You can change a microclimate. In Phoenix, Arizona, people used to go there uh, when they had breathing uh, problems before they built 125 golf courses and irrigated them. Phoenix, Arizona is no longer so dry. You, you impact small areas, but you can't impact the planet at all. And the other 99% of the scientists who believe that your, our view that is right? That isn't true at all. That, that 99%, 97%, that's ridiculous. 97% of nobody agrees with everything. We, have, uh, we sent out a, a statement to 33,000 scientists that all said, uh, you know, man-caused global warming is ridiculous. And it is ridiculous. I, I am astounded, um, but I, I appreciate your time in being here, and I appreciate you taking my abuse in, in the way that you have. And I, I don't I, mind it at all, and I think you're I, amazing. You've been sitting there for four hours. Your patience and, and paying attention, you are amazing. My, my hat's off to you. But, but I, I think we will strongly agree to disagree on this one. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and I, I think that, uh, I, yeah, we're, we're just going to agree to disagree, and I'll, I'll, I'll have a, a measure of the quorum here. No problem. And I appreciate being invited to come and speak. I always appreciate everyone. who And, I, and I was invited by the council. I, I always appreciate the opportunity for everyone to come here and have a, a spirited debate. I definitely appreciate the Army. I, I mean, I've dismissed this panel, so thank you very much. Thank you. I want to thank the Army Corps of Engineers. I, I appreciate the end of this hearing uh, livening up, so thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> But I appreciate the Army Corps of Engineers. I look forward to your partnership and all of the mayor's office and everyone who took the time to testify today. Thank you to our attorneys, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, uh, uh, Jonathan Seltzer, my legal counsel, Nick Wazowski, and, and all of you. And I look forward, to, really, to the Army Corps of Engineers to getting this right. So let's have a long and, and fruitful discussion. With that, uh, this hearing is now gaveled closed.